Hello my singing friends! Welcome back for yet another video tutorial of The Singer's Mask, but this time for version 3. It's been quite the adventure since all this started just over a month ago when I first decided to tackle the challenge of coming up with a mask comfortable for singers. Many of you will have seen version 2 of my mask and if you've watched carefully you will know that I never claimed that this mask was perfect. And thanks to the feedback from many mask makers on the Facebook page, I've come up with what I think is an improved version of the singer's mask. The link to the pattern for this mask can be found in the description box, box below, and I've also added a link to the Facebook page. And if you join this page, you will see many tips and tricks and improvements and suggestions for the singer's mask as well as options for instrumentalists. And some uh, mask makers have actually tweaked the pattern a bit and have come up with their own patterns and have posted these patterns on the Facebook page. Also stick around to the end of the video because I will have a few suggestions on how best to fit the mask and some suggestions on sizing. So now go ahead and print your pattern and let's get started. I've laid out here everything you need for this mask. I've already cut the pattern pieces and pinned them to the fabric. When you print your pattern, make sure you check the one inch gauge to make sure that your pattern pieces have printed out correctly. Note also that only half of the front piece is provided in the pattern. You will need to print out two and stick them together along the middle and transfer the notch markings. These notches will help you position the top and bottom pieces. Note that the notch positions are not the same for the top and the bottom. Keep that in mind otherwise you will end up with a very uneven mask. The fabric is typically cotton with a high thread count and this pattern assumes two layers of fabric. However, depending on your choice of fabric and the recommendations in your country, you might want to add another layer of interfacing to the top and the bottom of the mask. You will also need two elastics roughly measuring seven to eight inches long for the ear loops. Always test your elastic and adjust accordingly. I have cut 8 inches because I have opted to make my ear loops adjustable using quarter inch crafting beads and you'll, if you do this method you'll need 4 of these beads. Making your ear loops adjustable is optional. Note that you can also make this pattern very easily using the same methods using long ties or long elastics that will go around the head rather than the ear loops around the ears. The process is the same. I've also already cut the non-fusible interfacing and this is interfacing with good stiffness. I've actually changed my mind when it comes to the interfacing. I think stiffer might be better. So I suggest that you try it out for yourself and choose what you prefer. You can let me know what you think in the comments. Make sure though that it is the non-fusible kind of interfacing because it will form the casing for the zip ties. So you will actually need two of these 14 inch long zip ties to give the mask structure. You will also need a 3 inch wire or metal piece as I have here. So there you have it. Go ahead and cut your pattern pieces. The first step is to prepare the top of the mask. With right sides together you will stitch a quarter inch seam on the edge that is closest to the face. I've marked with tailoring pencil what my wrong side is because this fabric is the same color on both sides. Once that is complete we will need to turn this over with the wrong sides together but before doing that it's a good idea because this is a curve to notch the seam just not catching your threads just all along the seam so that it's easier to turn over. If you want to get a really nice finished edge, it's a good idea to top stitch the seam allowance 
all the seam allowances to one side and then top stitch. When you fold this over with the right sides facing outwards, it will help keep the seam in place. And when you press this, it won't move. Now I've flipped my pieces so that the right sides are facing outward. The next step is to sew the casing for the nose wire. I have simply measured out the lines and these will actually be the lines along which I will sew the casing. I have stitched along the short side as well as the long side of the casing and now it's time to add in the wire inside the mask. Once that's in place, simply stitch this final stitch. A final step which is optional but it's simply a good idea to keep the fabric stitched together when you assemble everything is to have a stitch going right along the edge at about one eighth of an inch. The next step is to prepare the bottom of the mask. Just like with the top of the mask, You'll put the right sides together so the wrong side is facing out as you can see by my X on my fabric and you will stitch a quarter inch seam along the chin side of the mask. I've now flipped the two pieces with the wrong sides facing each other and the right side facing out. And just like I did with the top piece, I top stitched in an invisible way the uh, seam edge and then you press. The final step is to stitch just at roughly an eighth of an inch from the edge just to keep the two pieces together and to keep them nice and stable. In this next step we'll prepare the front of the mask. Your first step is to take your interfacing and measure from one edge three eighths of an inch and draw the first line of your zip tie casing. And then you'll take your zip tie or the boning that you will be using and determine where your next line will be. And then you can draw that line. You'll do that on the top and you'll do that on the bottom of this front piece. Next you will place the interfacing on top of one of your front pieces of fabric and you will put the interfacing on the wrong side of the fabric. So on the outside here it will be the right side of the fabric. You will then stitch along the lines that you have drawn. I have now stitched both casings for the zip ties. At this stage it's important to test your zip tie casing just to make sure that either your zip tie or your boning actually slips through the zip tie casing. So just slip that through and just make sure it works on both sides because this is a point of no return. It'll be very difficult to come back and fix this if you've made mistakes on your casings. You may have noticed that I have already snipped the notches that were on the pattern pieces and I've done that on both pieces. I will now place the wrong side of the fabric on top of the interfacing and I'm essentially sandwiching the interfacing between the two pieces of fabric and this is the right side of the fabric this is also the right side of the fabric and this will be on the inside of the mask and this will be on the outside of the mask. Now you can go ahead and stitch these two pieces together at roughly one eighth of an inch from the edge just to keep everything together. The edges have now been stitched together but I did not stitch on the short end because of course we don't want to close off the, the casings for the zip ties. In this next step we will prepare both tabs. These tabs will be used to finish the edges of the mask. The first step is to fold the tab in half and press that in place. Next you will open up your tab and fold one side towards the center crease and just finger press that a little bit and then take your iron and just press that lightly. You will then press the other side towards the middle and press and then 
simply fold along the center piece. And now you'll really want to press that down so that you get a permanent crease. The folds that we created in this tab are identical to the folds that you will find in typical bias tape. So if you have bias tape at home, you can certainly finish the mask off with bias tape. We will now start connecting the pieces of the mask together. Note that for the top, the notches come in closer to the center and for the bottom, they are further out. So you will take your top piece and your front piece and pin them together. Now you will place your good side will be on the good side of the front of the mask and you will match your notches, your center notches first and you will pin that in place. Then you will take your edge and go right to the, to the notch and pin that in place. You'll also do the same on the other side and pin that in place right at the notch. And then you will work your way around and pin your curved edge to your straight edge. This is a bit tricky, it takes a bit of time and it's worth using lots of pins so that you can really lay out your top piece well up against the front piece. I have now pinned all along the edge of the top piece and the front piece. You will sew at a quarter inch seam. I suggest that you sew with the front part visible so you can keep an eye on your zip tie casing and you'll be able to sew right in between your eighth of an inch uh, seam that you did to connect your pieces and your zip tie casing and you can sew right along there at a quarter inch distance and not catch your zip tie casing. We've now finished sewing so when you turn this out you'll see you, you'll have a nice rounded corner for the top of your mask. Underneath if you feel that there's just too much bulk. I've already started snipping. You can just trim a little bit of the raw edges just ever so slightly. Remember this is the eighth of an inch uh, stitching that we did earlier on. It's not the important stitch. This is the important stitch. So you can just trim a little bit, especially near the deep curve of the front of the mask. So you just carefully trim a little bit of the fabric away. Once you've done that, you can then zig do a zigzag stitch right along the raw edge just to give it a nice finish. And there is your zigzag stitch complete. So it makes a really nice clean finish on the inside of the mask. Flip that over and you'll see you have really nice top of the mask in place. Now the next step is to connect the bottom part of the mask to the bottom of the front of the mask. So again you'll take your good side to your good side and you'll line up the center notches first, pin those in place and then take the side of the mask, line it up to the notch at the edge of the front piece and all the steps will be exactly the same as the steps we had for the top of the mask. So if you're not too sure just scroll back and listen to the video for the top of the mask as you're working on the bottom of the mask. Okay now this is starting to look like a mask. Now we begin the steps of finishing the mask and one of the steps that's that's important to do is to top stitch all the raw edges toward the middle of the mask. Now you won't stitch right around the mask. We don't want to have that much stitching on the front part of the mask. All we need to do is to come in into the mask about by an inch. So we're going to stitch from the edge all the way to about one inch 
into the mask. So we'll do this on either side. We'll do it on the top and the bottom of the mask. So all the top stitching is now complete. Of course you'll be using a coordinating thread. I used a white thread against this dark green fabric so that you could see my stitching. But essentially what we've done is we've taken all the raw edges towards the middle of the front and we've stitched that in place so that this side is nice and clean. And you've done that on, of course, on both sides. We're almost ready to attach our elastics to the mask, but there's one more step because what I've opted to do is an adjustable ear loop so that it can fit different sizes more easily. So first, taking a metal piece, and this is a paper clip that I've opened up and folded in half. We'll put the elastic through the paper clip and then we'll string the elastic through the bead. This first bead acts as our stopper. Then we fold the elastic over again. We string that through the paper clip. So now you'll have four layers of elastic. It's going to be a bit of a challenge to put through this bead, but it is doable. You just have to pull hard and you nudge it through. There has to be some resistance, otherwise that bead will not stay in place. And you have your adjustable ear loop. And now we're ready to stitch these elastics to our mask. You will take one elastic and you'll position the elastic on the good side of the front of the mask. And the, ed the ends of the elastic will be parallel to the zip tie casing. So the zip tie will be going through right here and your elastic will be right next to it. Pin that quite far back in place because you'll want to leave this pin in for quite a bit of time as we do some stitching. And we're just going to do about an eighth of an inch from the edge. We're just going to secure the elastic in place. I've now sewn across this edge. We'll take our casing and we'll open it up completely and we'll take our long edge and we'll place it on top of the elastic and we'll line up the two edges together and pin that in place. You'll notice that you have lots of extra fabric on either side and you're going to wrap that fabric around to the other side just lining up the raw edges and pin that in place. And you'll do that on both sides. Once everything is nice and secure and pinned, you will sew along the crease. Now you can see that I have stitched through that crease. All the while I have kept my pins in place on, for my elastic just to make sure that everything stayed in place. So now we will flip that over and wrap that around the sides and then do the first crease and then the second one over the edge and then you'll stitch that in place. It has to be tucked in a little bit better than this. It'll be easier to do at the sewing machine but that will finish your edge and you'll stitch right along this edge here, making sure that you catch both sides. If you need to do two rows of stitching, that's fine. You'll be using a coordinating thread, so it won't show if you need to stitch over that twice. And now we have the edge that has been stitched together. At this point, you can remove these two pins, and you'll see that your elastic now flips over, and it'll be able to go around the ears and by having this method to finish the elastic, the elastic will press against your cheek and it'll keep this side of the mask in place and form a great seal on the side of your face. And now we move on to the other side of the mask to finish the elastic, but first we'll have to insert our zip ties we need to prepare our zip tie. I'm showing this to you on a darker piece of fabric just so you can see that there's usually a point 
on the zip tie and it's usually thinner than the rest of the zip tie. You'll want to trim that off. Once your zip ties are prepared, just slip them through each of the casings. Just slip that right through and you'll do the same with the other zip tie. Once you've inserted your zip ties all the way to the end, you need to determine how much you'll need to cut off. So keep in mind you won't be cutting off right at the raw edge. You need to make room for the tie and the tie is a half inch that will wrap around this raw edge. So simply measure this out, add a half inch and that's how much you need to cut off. I've now trimmed my zip ties and I'm ready to now push the zip ties back in all the way through on both sides. I will then add the elastics the same way I did on the other side and I'll just make sure that I'm clearing the zip tie and the steps to add the tab are exactly the same as I did the first time around. And there you have it, version 3 of the Mask for Singers with adjustable ear loops. Now this mask fits me but it may not fit you. And a good place to start for sizing is to simply take the pattern pieces to a copier and size either down to 90% or up to 110%. And that would be a really good place to start for overall sizing. Now some tweaks that you might consider would be to make this front piece a little narrower if you prefer or even perhaps wider. Or if you want a bit more clearance around the eyes, it would be to make this curve a little deeper and some people have even sewn in a dart just to bring that down a little bit more. So this is the kind of tweaking that you can actually do with this pattern. Another thing about sizing and fit is how you wear the mask and the way that I initially prefer to wear the mask is to have my chin sit right at the edge of the fabric and this is because it will have extra fabric for ease of movement. So I'll put the mask on and place my chin right here, adjust the nose, and so when I open to sing, the mask barely moves. Now some people will, will wear this mask quite comfortably with the fabric touching their neck and they will also have freedom of movement, but for others this might actually pull the mask down. So it's a very individual thing and it's just a matter of finding what works best for you. Now while I have the mask on, I want to talk about mask etiquette and how you can actually store your mask in between before you get to put it in the wash. You will be singing in this mask, it might get quite humid and it's not a good idea to put your mask in a plastic bag you would want to put it in something breathable like a paper bag or you could have a fabric bag and seeing that you have to remove your mask from the ear loops what you can do is you put your hand through your fabric bag grab an ear loop grab your mask flip it in and you've not touched your mask with your hands and you can simply put that away until you get home and you're able to put both the bag and the mask in the wash. As I mentioned in the video, the mask instructions suggest two layers of fabric, uh, but guidelines might suggest that you have three layers of fabric. And so you already actually have three layers on the front piece, but you can always add an extra piece of fabric or interfacing on the top piece and the bottom piece. Now, whatever you do when you make the mask, when you make your first mask, don't use your best fabric. Start with scrap fabric. And this is what I did. This is scrap fabric. And actually when you hold this mask up to the light or to the sun, it's actually a little bit see-through. The fabric is a little thin. It's a bit like a bandana and the thread count is too low. So this is actually not good fabric for making masks, but it was perfect for the video tutorial. So for most of us, wearing masks on a regular basis is completely new and singers' masks are even newer. So there's still much work to be done. There's still lots of tweaking that you can do to this pattern to 
make it work for you. And I think finding the right mask is a lot like finding the right pair of jeans. It has to be just right, not too tight and not too loose and just made for you. So keep adjusting the pattern to make it work for you. So again, the link to the pattern and the instructions is found in the description box below, as is the link to the Facebook group. So please share your questions and your comments. I love to read all of that. And like and share this video with anyone who might be interested in making their own singer's mask. And in the meantime, stay safe and keep making music.